This video is part of a series of videos on LC3 programming. Specifically, we'll be addressing the, the task of debugging in this video. So let's start with a problem that we write a solution for and see if uh, how we would figure out if there are bugs in it. So the problem I want to work on, here's the statement of the problem. And the statement is, we want to count the number of ones in a given input. And we will assume in memory that the input is given at memory location x4000 and the program itself is going to be written at x3000 and the count which the result is going to be written at x4001. So this is the input and this is the output which is our result which is the number of ones in the input. So that's our problem statement and so let's see how we can devise a solution to this problem. So I'm going to do this by writing a flowchart for this problem and the basic intuition behind my my solution will be uh, will be to take this number the input number let's just uh, visualize this input number and if the input number is made up of some number of bits in this case there are 16 bits that the input is made of we're going to start looking at each bit in turn. We have a couple of ways to count. We can start counting from right to left or we can count the leftmost number and then get it out and move this here and keep counting. So my idea will be to use the leftmost number and the reason will become clear to you in just a second. So my idea is if there's a 1 here and there's a 0 here and a 1 here, first I'm going to count this and I can figure this out because a number which has a 1 here, which is the most significant bit, which is also the sign bit, will be a 1 if it is a negative number. If it's positive or 0, then that will be a 0. So I'm going to use that knowledge and when I'm done with uh, querying what this is, then I'm going to move this left by 1. And we know that a left shift is simply, if you take the number, whatever the number is, whatever this register is, let's say this register for us is going to be R1. If I take R1 and add it to itself, that will essentially do the job of shifting it by left. So that's what we want to do. So let's design a flowchart for doing this problem. So I'm going to start off by saying I'm going to make use some registers. I'm going to use R0 to hold the memory address x4000. I'm going to use R1 to hold the memory contents of x4000, which is my number, which is my input. And R2 will hold a count, which for us is zero. So this is our count and this is our input. So we've initialized all of them. So this is our first step I'm going to take. The next step I'm going to take is I'm going to immediately ask the question, is R1 negative? If R1 is negative, if it's not negative, if no is the answer, then we'll do go that way if R1 is negative will go this way and if it is negative we're going to increment the count in r2 because we found one more one so we'll increment the count by r2 by one and then we're going to do the next step which is we're going to um, shift it but but we know that we're going to have to shift it no matter which way we go so on a no we simply come to this point and in both these cases we're going to shift it by left so this becomes our r1 assign the value r1 plus r1 so now that we've done that we can now ask the question are we done yet well one of two things have to happen if we are done either r1 should become a zero so 
we're going to ask the same question here is r1 zero after making this shift if the answer is no then we have more work to do so i will say we have more work to do we're going to go back here and we're going to ask the question again if the answer is yes it is zero so i'm going to write it here for just yes it is zero then we are done we're just going to write whatever is in r2 which is our result we're going to write it to the memory contents of x 4001 and we are done so this will be our outline for our program so let's go ahead and start writing this code so i'm going to open my lc3 tools and to make sure i can use both of them and also see them side by side i'm going to put this tools on the side here and leave my flowchart showing here so this is my program i'm going to start writing this code and the code i'm writing is right here inside my lc3 so this is the code so program to count number of ones and so I'm going to write this program to run at 4000 and I'm going to write my code that says I'm going to first do an LD into register R0 and I'm going to load the address of my input pointer to my input and the input itself is going to be I'll put the input address here the point input the pointer to my input is going to be a dot fill and that's going to be an x4000 all right so we have the address and then we're going to do an LDR to load into R1 the contents of the base address being R0 with an offset of 0 and we there's another video where you can look at what how LD and LDR and all these work so we have a LDR holding the value of that the input we want to work on and we're going to cl clear our register which is R2 R2 pound 0 and now I'm going to write my code in keeping with I'm, I'm trying to follow this logic here I'm going to say is R1 negative so if it is negative which is branch on a negative uh, on a zero or a positive I'm going to go off to some place which says done and done is going to be my code somewhere here where done for us in our picture here done is some we can annotate our picture accordingly so a done is going to be a place somewhere here if we are if we are done then we come to this place no no we're not going to come to this place we're going to skip all our steps so we're just going to skip here and we're going to come here which says that it is we have to skip these steps so we're just going to say not done exactly at this point but we're going to say branch positive 2 we'll call this not done but we'll call this next because i'm going to go to a next iteration so i'm going to call my next step here and and if it is positive if it's negative we know that we're going to add to r2 r2 pound one and we're going to add r1 to itself and put the result back in r1 and so that's going to be my shift so this is my shift this is my found another one and now i'm going to come here and this will be my step here is my step where i'm going to say this is actually my next because that's where i want to come if i get out so I'll skip that addition only if I don't have a negative number. I shift back and now that I come here, I'm going to check if after doing this, if it is a, if it's, if it is a zero or not, if it is zero, 
which means if it is if it is not zero in this case i'm going to go back so if it's either a negative or positive then i'm going to go back so i'm going to call this more there's more to do so i'm going to go back here and i'm going to ask the question again which is more okay so so i'm going to go back to that step and perform this step again um, on the other hand if i uh, if i get to this point and it says branch if it's if it's equal to zero then i'm done if i'm done then i'm just going to take my uh, value that is in register r2 right now and i'm going to store it at the address that is in r0 but with an offset of one because i want to store it at i want to store it at result so output two memory location x4001 okay we are done we're gonna do a halt if i come here and we're gonna put a dot end here and let's build our code and let's save it first i'm gonna create a new folder um, and uh, i will just put it somewhere on my machine let's just uh, uh, do this I'm gonna put it box actually let's put it in the recordings there's my recordings and I'm making a new video so I'm gonna make a new folder this is debugging and let's put this let's just call this count once and it's an assembly program so let's go ahead and build it and the assembly was successful and we're gonna run it now so so far we have the code and it compiled perf it assembled perfectly I could have made some mistakes but it's a simple program and there's unlikely to be many mistakes so I'm gonna try to debug my program so let's see what the act of debugging is gonna be so our first job in debugging is when we think of debugging we think of it as the act of debugging for us is is a simple assertion of we have an expected behavior and we have an observed behavior versus an observed behavior and we we have this expectation and observation on each instruction we can we can think of this as on execution of each line or sometimes a block a block is a set of lines we have an expected behavior and observed behavior and we are checking to see if they agree if they agree if they are equal then we move on if they disagree if they're not equal then we have a bug so that's our logic so let's go ahead and see how we can do that so my first my first approach to debugging will be a simple technique that we will will use a lot um, this is what we call as white box text testing white box debugging or testing where we think of our program as simply a program that takes input and produces an output we give it input one and we observe output one we see whether it's correct then we give it input two we get output two and we keep checking whether it's producing the right output or not so we're doing our analysis at a very high level we're not looking at each line we're looking at the entire program this is what we call as a no this is what we call as a black box testing i'm afraid i got that wrong because the box itself is never open in the black box we are we are completely oblivious to what is inside the box so we call it a black box testing and later once we if we find any problems then we dive in 
and we start doing what we call as white box testing. In white box testing, we reveal the internals of our code and we start single stepping through the code. So when we do our, our second phase, which is if we find mistakes in our white box testing, then we do our second phase, which is if we find, if we find that there are bugs, if there's bugs, which means that there is a mismatch in the expected output and the observed output, then we do what we call as white box testing, which is we now go into our box and for each input, we start single stepping through our code and we see where in our code we found a mismatch between the expected behavior and observed behavior. If you found it on this line, then we're going to fix this line and we're going to rerun, rerun our program again. So that's our idea of white box and black box testing. So let's go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, we're going to go here and we will first run our simulator and um, code in simulation and what for now what I'm going to do is I'll just put a breakpoint on my halt and I'm going to go to memory location x4000 and let's take a very simple uh, let's take a simple um, actually we have a bug already so in fact I said the program has to run at 3000 and I put it at 4000 so that's our bug right off the bat so we can fix that we can assemble it we can go into our program and now I'm gonna put something at x4000 so let's go to x4000 and and let's first reinitialize the machine Re reinitialize the machine let's reload our program and let's now go to x4000 and at x4000, I'm going to put a value. Um, these addresses are kind of broken up because I am using a window that's half size. So I'm going to go here and let's just put the value here, which is for now, I'm going to put a hexadecimal value, which is x8000. And we know that this is a uh, number which is uh, we can write it in in decimal or binary so let's see how i write it in binary and i'm gonna and let's put it in hex so i'm gonna put a hex value which is x eight thousand which means as one followed by a bunch of zeros so this ought to This ought to get us ready to run our code. So let's go back to our x3000 now and let's put a breakpoint on this halt. This is what we mean by black box testing. I'm not, I don't really care about anything. I just want to run the program and see when it halts, if I have the result, which is the expected result, which is one in this case at 4001. So I'm just going to say go and it ran and it, for some reason, it, yeah, it did did come to this point. So I'm going to go to x4000 and see whether I have the right results. So that's 4000 and I go see at 4001 and it's still a zero. So I know that the very first test case I tried itself failed. So now it's time to get our hands dirty. So we're going to go back and reload this program again and we're going to start doing our white box testing. So let's step one at a time. And I step over, I s step over and I notice that I have the number and I notice that I cleared my register R1. Um, I haven't cleared it yet. And that's my number that I got in 4000. Um, my R1 has the number which I just loaded. And then I'm going to go one more step. I'm going to clear my register R2. It should clear right now looks like I went too far so let me restart my code I'm gonna step one at a time step over 
step over step over and now I'm doing a branch on positive the, the problem is I should be really looking at register R1's contents but right now my my PSR says that it's a zero whereas the number I actually loaded is a negative number so the problem really is that I'm not looking at R1's R1's um, status I'm looking at uh, R1's uh, nature but I'm looking at R2's nature which is obviously zero so I found a bug right there and I'm gonna fix it the fix is obviously that these two instructions were should have been in the they're in the wrong order so I'm gonna first put this instruction I could put this instruction anywhere but I'm gonna put it here right now and now I'm gonna rerun this program assemble it and rerun it and when I rerun it this time I will see and I'll reinitialize my machine, reload my program and make sure that at x4000 I have my number which is my value which I wanted to put here which is 8000 and I'm going to go back to my location. I have a halt still there and now I'm going to start single stepping to see whether it's the expected behavior is happening. So I'm going to step, step step at this point I'm gonna branch and it does say that it's negative and so it's not gonna branch it's gonna fall through so which is what I want I go in I increment my r2 by 1 and then I left shift my r1 at this point and I left shifted the zero should the one should fall off and the net result should be a zero and if it is a zero, so it says branch on negative or positive, go back, otherwise I'm done. So I'm gonna step over, and this is gonna tell me that I have a, pos a zero value, so I'm gonna store the value, which is in this case, the number one, to the memory location, which is this location. So let's step over, and we are about to halt, so I'm gonna go check and see whether my 4,000, 4001 has a one and we are done. So this is the act of debugging in a nutshell. Okay, again to recap, all we're really doing in debugging is we're gonna start off by looking at our code as if it were a black box and if it if it everything checks out then we can consider it it done. If it there's a bug and there's a mismatch between the expected behavior and the uh, and the observed behavior of your whole box, then we do white box testing where we single step, one step at a time. And when we find a bug, we go back and fix the bug, come back and run it again. And we can switch back and forth between white box and black box testing. That's the end.